Hi, uh, my name is Meta Strik. I am a research fellow at the Melbourne Brain Centre Imaging Unit in Melbourne in Australia. Uh, today I would like to present our work uh, uh, investigating visual snow syndrome and the structure of the brain using 70 MRI. So visual snow, what is it? Um, I'm assuming Probably most of you have never heard of it. It's quite a rare disorder, although maybe not as rare as we initially thought. Um, so visual snow is characterized by this veil of flickering dots across the entire visual field. It's persistent, so it's there 24 seven uh, with, with the eyes open or eyes closed. Um, the onset can vary a bit from either uh, being uh, reported as lifelong, which could mean people were born with it or developed it somewhere in childhood or others report like this sudden onset of uh, symptoms. So visual snow uh, syndrome is diagnosed not only by visual snow, but also by um, other visual symptoms. As we, so we see a lot of uh, um, uh, after images, uh, training of moving objects, um, uh, these floaters in the sky, bright flashing lights, um, uh, but also poor night vision, uh, nyctilopia. And if you mix it all together, uh, you get something like this, uh, which you can imagine can be quite traumatic. And uh, it's not only static, it's, it's dynamic, so it's constantly moving as well, and it's there 24-7. Um, the disease doesn't only get character. It's not only characterized by visual symptoms. Um, patients also report a lot of non-visual symptoms, such as migraines, uh, tinnitus, like uh, ringing and buzzing sound of the ears, paresthesia, pins and needles. Uh, but also uh, problems like anxiety, poor concentration, and psychiatric symptoms like um, depersonalization or derealization. So um, where you feel that the that you're detached from yourself or the world around you is not real. So it's a complex disease with visual and non-visual symptoms. We do not know what it's causing this disease, and we unfortunately don't have, have do not have a cure yet. So what do we know? Um, there are a few brain imaging studies out there. Uh, people uh, looked at brain function um, using PET or task fMRI. And a few studies have looked at the uh, volumetrics of the brain. Um, they found uh, small differences between patients and controls. Um, um, but the results were kind of conflicting in the sense uh, some areas were larger, other were smaller. So in this study, we aim to um, also look at the morphology of the brain in a slightly larger group of patients and in using high field MRI. And we also looked at the microstructure of the brain using the ET1 uh, values um, of different cortical and subcortical and laminar uh, regions. So um, we included 40 visual snow syndrome patients and to study the effects of uh, migraine, uh, we include 22 with migraine and 17 without. Um, we use a whole body uh, semen system with a single channel transmit and 32 channel receive head coil. Um, we use the amplitude rate and the uniden to segment the white matter, gray matter, um, uh, cortical uh, regions of interest, and also the thalamic nuclei. We were interested in a thalamus because it's a very important uh, hub in the brain, uh, which relays sensory information. And given a lot of sensory symptoms in these uh, patients, um, we thought this might be an area uh, that is specifically affected. Um, so from all these different regions, we extracted the volumetrics and uh, the T1 values, um, which we used as an in vivo proxy of the microstructure uh, of the brain. And we correlated these uh, any group differences to um, uh, several clinical variables. So what did we find? Um, so vision snow syndrome patients showed a similar morphometry uh, compared to uh, controls, uh, but we did find uh, significant changes um, in vision snow syndrome patients in the gray matter of the brain, so in cortical gray matter, but also in the deep gray matter structures. Um, we found a relation with the T1 values of the thalamus and the perceived disruptiveness and the number of visual snow symptoms. Um, and uh, when we studied uh, migraine, 
um, we didn't find any group difference there. So this could suggest that this, the things, the findings uh, are um, a visual snow uh, specific. Uh, so next we're kind of interested in, is the entire gray matter affected or do we see some kind of cortical specificity? Um, interestingly, we found that most areas of the brain were uh, affected and we found the strongest effect for the occipital regions, uh, followed by parietal, temporal and uh, frontal areas. And if we look at the thalamus, um, uh, all nuclei uh, uh, show significant group differences and potentially with a posterior anterior pattern uh, going on. So to conclude, uh, we didn't find any morphology changes, uh, but we found these widespread changes in the gray matter uh, microstructure, uh, with the strongest effect seen in the occipital lobules. Uh, but also the most areas uh, of the cortex were affected, which might explain the um, wide variety of symptoms we see in these patients. So the next step is to look at brain function and uh, look at functional connectivity and, and study the brain as a, as a network. Thank you so much for your attention.